quick run through the execute SQL task options. Just pull one into control flow and open it up. Uh, name, description, self explanatory. Timeout, you can have a timeout for the connection in seconds. Nought's the default for no timeout. Code page, uh, this is used when translating Unicode values in variables. Defaults to the host setting. Type conversion mode, uh, allowed or none. Um, this controls whether the task is allowed to attempt data conversions when loading SSIS variables with uh, the values of output parameters and single row result sets. Result set, um, none, single row, full result set or XML. Uh, so fairly self-explanatory. XML result sets just come back in a string. Connection type, um, there's your choices. Uh, not so much more to be said. And the connection, the actual connection manager we're going to use. Uh, we've got one handy there. Uh, source type, um, direct input. In other words, it will go straight into the next field for the SQL statement. Or you could have instead file connection. And then you'd have to name your file connection, which we haven't got one handy at the moment. Or you could use the variable source variable and name your variable and potentially then it could let you, you could build your SQL sort of dynamic SQL style. Uh, is query stored procedure? Um, it's only relevant to ADO connections. Default is false. You need to set this to true if using an ADO.NET connection and calling a stored procedure. Um, especially if you're using output parameters for a return. And bypass prepare, only relevant to OLADB connections. Default is true, i.e. prepare is disabled. Prepare, if prepare is enabled, bypass prepare equals false, then OLADB connection prepares the T-SQL before executing it, meaning it stores some sort of parse and compile information. And this would make a single call of the execute SQL task slightly slower, but would speed up the process if you were calling um, this execute task more than once, say at least three or four times. So that's the general tab. Um, moving on to the parameter mapping tab. This is where you'd map SSAS variables to parameters in the SQL. Um, so you'd add something in there. Let me just spread these out so you can see the column headings. There's a bit of a pain. And some more. There we go. So there's the variable name you're interested in. Direction, uh, input, output, or maybe return value. The data type, the parameter name within the SQL um, and the size if it's a string and obviously multiples as required. So that's the parameter mapping tab. Uh, the result set tab. Um, nothing available at the moment because if we go back to the general tab we'll see that the result set is set to none. So if we set that to full result set say and then go back to the result set we can now add a line in uh, so the result set name and the variable we're going to land that result set into there we go so that's the result set tab and onto the expressions tab expressions uh, just a way of setting some task options according to the values of some SSIS expressions. Um, let's do one just to show what we can do. Um, create one. Um, how about the isolation level? There, there's a property of the task. 
and we could give that a value of 1. That would mean read and committed. And we OK that. Now we can see we have an expression set. And if you OK come out of this altogether, you can see we have a FX little symbol in the top left of the box. Uh, just to show we have an expression set. And that's it. That's a quick run through the execute SQL task options. Thanks for watching.